Well, hello, Rob. Very happy to be um, doing a little something for the Cornwall Air Ambulance fundraiser. And this is uh, 12 days of Christmas, and um, I think day three, uh, uh, 12 different people are going to be doing things for fundraising on the, the 12th day of Christmas. So on 12th day, on day three, this is going, um, going out for, uh, it's going to be um, today, I guess, the duck parmentier. And duck parmentier is a French dish, which is basically comfy duck legs um, made into what I would call duck cottage pie. It's basically, you cook the duck, duck, the duck very gently, shred it, then mix it with some lovely red wine, and make it into the equivalent of a cottage pie. There are lots and lots of a very nice cheese. My, one of my favourite cheeses is called Conte. So let's um, have a have a bit of a have a bit of a go at that. So to start with, I'm just actually going to make some um, to cook some to, to cook legs. Now you don't have to do this because um, you can buy confit duck in any supermarket these days. But just supposing you had the old duck leg available, and in, in fact, it's quite a sort of interesting thing to do <clears throat> with duck legs. I mean, a lot of people find duck legs a little bit tougher, maybe a bit harder. And actually, it's a very common thing that the French do is to turn the confit, uh, turn the duck legs into confit. Also, I would have, have to say that if you were uh, if you ever thought of this, supposing you had a great big turkey and because of um, current COVID situation, you couldn't use the whole turkey, you can actually confit turkey legs as well. Basically, all I do, first of all, is just get my, my, my duck legs and just cover them in salt. Um, like this. So, I mean, that's all you do for... Um, 26 hours to 24 hours just allow that to cure away and and then the next thing you do after after that is just to give them take them out of the salt give them a little bit of a rinse and then oh hi rachel we nice, are here nice of you to join well you know sorry sorry i wasn't being fashionably late i promise uh i was like in mayfair how are you well, doing I, Rick? well i was I'm, I'm doing all right actually to be honest i was just Very explaining funny. I, t I first of all just mentioned the dish, the confit of, of duck parmentier, um, and the fact that we call it, in the trade, we call it duck cottage pie. And I was sort of saying that in, in a way, I think duck cottage pie is a great dish to have sometime over Christmas because it's sort of a bit like a shepherd's pie or a cottage pie. But because it's made with duck legs, it's got a slight sort of, I don't know, it seems a little bit deluxe. Plus, I'm going to put a lot of red wine into, my, um, into the, into the duck as well. Fantastic. So I was just also explaining that I've just made a, um, a, the makings of a duck confit. I've just salted my duck legs. I'm just explaining now that what, what you then do is get a load of duck fat. I mean, a load. And you put your uh, duck, I'm not going to do this. Well, I could start. No, because I haven't actually um, you... salted these for long enough. Yeah, no. Go you, on. You can do. I mean, I, this is, I mean, I have to say, Rick, this is super. I mean, this is amazing for us. We're joining you live at your cookery school in Padstow. And this is, and I want to say a big thank you, because um, obviously you're taking part in the 12 days of Christmas in support of the very amazing charity, the Cornwall Air Ambulance, um, which is all thanks to obviously our amazing, the our new ambassador, Karen Dickens from the committee UK Boats for Caribbean, UK and the Caribbean. But this is fantastic. So this is a special dish um, that is, in fact, from your, taken out of your, your book that's out now, Secret France. Um, and this is a special dish with a bit of a, bit of a twist for Christmas, isn't it? Well, yes, as, as I've explained, the, the, the only twist really, I mean, it, it, it is really quite a sort of special dish anyway, because everybody, well, I assume everybody knows cottage pie or shepherd's pie. Cottage pie in my book is always made with minced beef, shepherd's pie with minced lamb. And in my, when I was a child, it was always made with the leftover from roasts, either roast beef or lamb. But this duck parmentier is made with salted duck's legs. And as I was saying, Rachel, I was just showing how you salt the ducks. I've been a bit naughty now because you've got to leave the salt in the duck legs for about six hours. 
but I want to show the next stage, which is basically just to put your duck legs in loads and loads of duck fat. And the thing that makes a good coffee for me is time, plenty of time. Oh, w so Would we had world enough and time? I said, quoting Andrew Marvel, Marvel the poet. The and then all you do then is just take that and heat it gently and cook it for several hours, 90 minutes, an hour and a half, several hours, one and a half hours, till the duck is falling off the bone. And that is your starting point for duck confit. And as I was saying, you can buy duck confit already made up in any supermarket now. Um, and a great, a great pro product it is, I think. I mean, I just love salted duck. You know, it just works extremely yeah. well. Yeah, it's one of our one of our favourites. Now I know also, Rick, that there's obviously a lot of people that have joined to watch you pr prepare this. And if I'm right, obviously I know that a lot of anyone that's watching who's also going to be doing your recipe, um, also in support of the Cornwall Air Ambulance, please do email in um, your photos of your recipe because I know that you're going to be selecting the winner that will be able to receive. Um, from their photo, um, receive one of your, your, your new book, Secret France, a signed copy. So please do email in your, your finished uh, product. I will recreate mine at the weekend, Rick, so you'll see mine coming up. Um, email <laughs> That's it good. At TF, I will. I will be doing it. TF at committeeboatsuk.com. All information on the cornwallairambulance.org website. But this is amazing because obviously Cornwall, Rick, for you, I know obviously you're live from your cookery school in Padstow, but it's really, really close to your heart. Um, we, I had the, or we had the absolute pleasure of, of raising loads of money for Cornwall Air Ambulance last year um, when you were Didn't here we with our, our artist. Oh, my yes. God, it's amazing. And our artist, Sherry Valentine Danes, obviously painted your amazing portrait and you helped us raise over 95 thousand pounds for the Cornwall Air Ambulance. Um, I've also, I've got some of Sherry's picture painting here behind me of St. Ives. We're very Cornwall here today. Um, but yeah, we, we, we loved having you here and it's a huge honour to be working with you again um, for the 12 days of Christmas campaign. And also the big give, because just while everybody's watching or for those that have joined, while Rick is preparing this amazing Christmas dish, the 12 Days of Christmas Challenge, incredible challenge for the Cornwall Air Ambulance. And if you donate, so please do donate, cornwallairambulance.org. And if you donate, the big give will double your money. So we stand a full chance. We have a 200,000 pound target and we are so going to hit it with the help of uh, Rick Stein today. So thank you for that. Very, that very great. That sounds really good. I, mu I must say I really enjoyed the, um... The fundraiser up in London when it's a bit sort of embarrassing to have one's own painting being done in front of you but actually it was a really good likeness I felt maybe because it made it, me maybe look a bit younger and a bit more handsome than I really am so I really enjoyed the painting <laughs> it was yeah, I bet you did I think it was you know it was an amazing experience the clients loved it everyone loved it and I think we've also got I'm with Sherry tomorrow on the live feed in aid of Cornwall Air Ambulance again at 11 o'clock, um, where we're also going to be raising money. So we, we're, we're super close, we're getting there and it's amazing, amazing to be with you. Um, and the most amazing thing at the moment, Rick, I have to say is that the Rick Stein restaurants, you're back open, you're all open, right? Well, gosh, yes, I mean, uh, it, it's been a weird time. Um... No, I've been running restaurants since the mid 70s and I've never seen Padstow like it. You know, I've, during the first lockdown, funnily enough, Rachel, I was in Australia. I got stuck there in March. Oh. And I was in Australia for five months before I could get wow. a flight home. So yeah. actually, this last month has been my first experience of lockdown here in the UK. And Padstow was, I mean, it was just really odd because, I mean, even in the depth of winter, there's still people in Padstow, there's still people wandering around the streets and it was just empty. Yeah. It was quite nice because it's sort of like, um, you know, it's like Padstow and bygone days. But last night, having all the restaurants open again with all the light and the doors open and people going in and the warmth was amazing. on a cold night, it was just amazing, yeah. Oh, so very happy It's an to amazing, Phil. You, you must be. I am absolutely thrilled because obviously I live round the corner from your restaurant in Barnes, where I'm a regular, um, or Sandbanks when I go down there. So 
but you have to say, Rick, you have kept me and hundreds of people going throughout lockdown. Because I have to say, no, no, I'm, I'm honestly, Stein's at home. I, I couldn't oh. think about it. Last week, I had my lobster, lobster for two. And A, you make it really, really easy. And also, I scored so many brownie points because you make it so easy. By the time I finished, it looked a little bit like yours. And it was amazing. So I've got my Jeffrey Pratt lobster behind me. I'm a massive lobster fan. But honestly, Stein's at home. Brilliant idea. Loved it. Amazing. Well, I have. that's very funny you should say that because I actually had the lobster box last week as well because I just asked if Did I could, you... yeah, well, just be a bit of a, a sort of lobster guinea pig. I love it. Just, and how, and how did you That sounds it, an Rick? interesting recipe. Uh, but, that um, does, doesn't it? <laughs> no, no, because I just wanted to see, A, I wanted to check the instructions and also to correct the quality. And I was just halfway through it and my wife sat and I said, do you know, this is quite good. And I actually opened <laughs> a glass, a bottle of white burgundy uh, just, just after the scallops. I was thinking, actually, if I got, had received this, I'd be very happy. So there you go. Um, so I'm very pleased it. you enjoyed it. <laughs> I did. Yes. I, I also had my uh, bottle of Rick Stein champagne. No, it was all, it was fabulous. So thank you so much. But I also know that the Stein's, um, the, the, you know, the Stein's takeaway, you can actually, we can still have that, which is great. But your restaurants are back open, which is amazing. Now you're down in your, obviously the cookery school um, in Padstow. And you have also very kindly, we've got the most amazing grand auction, obviously, um, which is the Cornwall Air Ambulance dot auction for those of you, of you that are looking for where to bid. And kindly, you've done two one day courses um, at the cookery school that people can bid on, can't they? Yeah, that's right. I mean, they can either come as a couple two courses together or you know two, two courses separately yeah so I hope, hope to take, up, take up that oh, no. bid well for oh. it i i will and actually the, the auction opens i'll be opening live tomorrow after my feed with sherry i'll be opening the auction live and i will be there bidding we're all going to be bidding we're all going to be bidding because we love cornwall and pasto and also your place and we can go and eat in your restaurant it's all a win-win situation. But yeah. obviously, we can't forget why we're here. Um, it's amazing. Obviously, we're all raising money for the Cornwall Air Ambulance, 12 days of Christmas, the big give where your donation will be doubled. So again, please do go to the cornwallairambulance.org. Everything's on the website. And any questions, questions or recipes that you're going to send in, please do send any questions because Rick will be taking questions. I'm having a few coming through at the moment, actually, Rick. While you're cooking, can I ask you a couple of those? Yeah, before you ask me, Rachel, let me just explain what I've been doing because I've sort of yes, feel I'm ne neglecting the actual process of um, of, of making this dish. Duck. I've just I've just been chopping some shallots, as you can see, in a bit of time. But um, this is what a duck confit leg looks like when you've cooked it. And I, I'm, what I'm going to do now is just take the skin off uh, because I don't want that in the dish. But I just I'm very keen on um, not wasting anything. So. This is not the sort of stuff you throw, you throw away, right? You would definitely okay. keep that. And with a previous duck, in Blue Peter style, I've laid it out here and salted it, the duck, duck skin it, it is. What I'm gonna do is pop that in the oven for about 15, 20 minutes to crisp it up, right? Uh, and right. so I'm just doing that to, um, just to, sh to sort of, um, show you that I'm very, very keen not to waste anything. I did, did one a bit earlier, and that's what it looks like. Now, I don't know whether oh, you enjoy um, you enjoy pork scratchings in the pub. <laughs> but Love these are, um, a bag of pork These are duck yep. scratchings. Or I don't know if you remember Monty Python years ago, they were talking about where well, you've got your pork scratchings and your chicken itchings. <laughs> <laughs> these, are these are duck They're itchings. These are duck itchings. Really good. I love but, it. What I'm saying is to never think, never, ever throw anything like that away because um, food is sort of such a, it's, so, it's bad to throw anything away. If, any, if you can think of using anything up, do. And in fact, during um, the lockdown in, um, in Australia, I was en endlessly trying to uh, devise ways at home. And I think lots of other people were doing the same thing of not wasting anything. And it's amazing. I, I actually did a little video at one stage out there in Sydney making a nazi goreng, which is a stir-fried rice dish from Malaysia or Indonesia. 
And I sort of worked out that what a Nazi gang actually is, is a way of using le up leftovers. So at one stage, <laughs> in my Nazi gang, I was using, I was putting in a pizza from the takeaway we got in the, ne the day before, a, some roast lamb sliced up thinly from the roast the day before that, plus some avocados from the tree, you know, avocado oh. tree in the garden in Sydney, putting it all in the stir fry, but it was really good. And, um, was it good? So, I love it. Was it was really good. That, so that, that really isn't. You know, that's doing doing anything. crispy duck skin is is definitely part of what I'm all about. So, but what I'm doing here is just, um, as I said, I've cooked this duck leg for um, about ninety minutes, so it's falling off the bone. Just taking it off the bone now, and um, I've d done um, a couple of legs already, and um, now we're going to just make up the um, the duck palmentier. Wow. So there's only I, I think I don't think I need to uh, get anybody to guess what sort of fat I'm going to put in in the pan <laughs> to start my um, think. duck dish. Let's think. Should I be using Let's oil or should I be using <laughs> duck, duck fat? fat? So there we go in the pan. Plenty of it. Now then, this is um, excuse me. Thank you. As I'd probably been saying, if I repeat myself, do do forgive me, but um, I got this dish from Burgundy when we were filming for Secret France, um, the last series I did before lockdown, and um, we were filming in a in a Burgundy vineyard, and I asked the the people, um, what do you serve to the because they were great picking during that period we were there. What do you serve? And they said, oh, one of the favourite dishes is duck parmentier. And that's where I got the dish from. And the reason is that they love it. The great pickers love it because it's very sustaining. It's quite rich. But the other reason yeah. they love it is it goes very well with red burgundy. OK, so ah, it's sort of appropriate, I think, that you should be sitting down to lunch with... Um, a dish which goes well with red, red, red burgundy. And I'm going to put in a minute a great deal of Pinot Noir, which is red burgundy, into the dish. And Fantastic. when you're making this dish, you, you can use any, any red wine, of course. But I do think Pinot Noir, which is quite light and quite acidic, works especially well with, with my duck parmentier. So yeah. I'm just um, sweating off some shallots now. And I'm going to add a bit of... Um, quite a lot of time. I'm a bit of a, a fan of time, as you can imagine. Time. And yeah. now here is this sort of um, essential Christmas element, um, because um, when I was dreaming up this idea of, of doing um, duck, duck parmentier, I thought, well, we're just going to have a bit of a Christmas twist. I like Christmas really? twist. It's very sort of what magazines say. You know, every but year I they come up to me and say... Well, can you can you do something new with roast turkey, but give it a tri an extra Christmas twist? So uh, this is a Christmas twist. Is is, is cranberries? Cool yeah, do the cranberries? I mean, is that because that adds a little bit of sweetness to your to your duck? It, it it not only adds a bit of sweetness, but a little bit more acidity as well. So in fact, what, I mean, as you can see, I'm being live. I might have slightly overcompensated the amount of um, duck fat I put in there, but. Let's not worry about that too much. We won't. Um, but what you need in this thing is an element of, of sourness, which actually will come from the cranberries, and more so from what I'm also going to add, which is, um, oh, I mean, probably, let's just say half a bottle of Pinot Noir, right? Cool, blimey. Actually, I'm, actually, I'm just going to stop. You can talk a bit more now, Rachel, because that... I just want to let those um, shallots cook out a little bit more. Brilliant. Well, what, what, Would okay, you well, ask well, me some well, more well, questions? Because well, this is when well, I, well, this is when well, I think well, help. Well, I've got to go on them. Well, I will. I would love to. I mean, one of the things, obviously. So my kind of knowledge of um, comfort duck legs. This is quite. This is a traditional French cooking method, isn't it? It, it is, and I mean, I mean, let me just give you a very simple recipe for. Confit duck. It's just to it's just to cook them. I mean, when you, if I wasn't shredding them up, what I would do is just um, take them out of the fat, warm them up, either in the oven or in a pan, and just serve them like that. Maybe in a frying pan or in the oven, just get a bit of colour on them, and then serve them up. And you definitely need to serve them up with something 
as I said, a little bit acidic, a bit, um, a, a bit sort of astringent. One of my favourite dishes to go with duck confit is um, is braised red cabbage. I'm sure everybody's got their own recipe exactly. for braised red cabbage. And what I do is thinly slice it, the red cabbage and cook it with a green apple, with a cooking apple, brown sugar and, and vinegar and some onions. And whatever spice you like, I tend to just stick with cloves or a bit of allspice. And you just cook that very, very gently. Add some, add some butter as well. And you just cook that for about an hour, very slow in a casserole, in one of those Le Creuset type casseroles. And that, the duck confit and the, the braised red cabbage and just a simple salad I like, again, dressed with quite a, with a simple oil. I, I use sunflower oil and vinegar dressing. It just makes a perfect light lunch. That's so we've got, we've got some, a bit of co color happening now. So now I'm just gonna um, completely um, flood. <laughs> this is a great this dish, with, um, Rich. Oh my word, is that the entire Plenty of Pinot. Wow. And uh, that's about 200 um, milliliters or so of, um, of uh, Pinot Noir it. and a similar quantity of chicken stock. I'm just going to um, hope I can get that boiling away and just... Oh, thank you. Do you know what, Nick? Where would I be without Nick? You see... Hey, Nick. It, it's been such <laughs> a long time since I've been back in the cookery school. I can't remember <laughs> which is the right knob to turn the <laughs> heat up. Knob? Fantastic. So, that colour's looking amazing. Look at that. Very crispy. coming on. Yes. I like yes. it. I do like it. So we've and just got to wait this... a little bit now while, while that yeah. just reduces a bit. So... Fantastic. And th this recipe, um, Rick, if I'm, obviously this is in your, your Secret France book, which is now out now because I've got a copy. Um, <laughs> the, the, the original duck pie is in there, isn't it? It is, yes. Um, and it, I think when people, I say to people, or people say to me, what's your favorite dish? And that is definitely one of them uh, in the book. Wow. And um, yeah. just, just when you eat it, I mean, you, you have to be in a sort of fairly jolly mood because it's, well, why do you have to be in a jolly mood? Because it's much better made in quite large quantities for a number of people. And also because, as you can see, it contains so much Lots red wine. wine. It's probably only correct that you would... Um, that you would serve it with so much red wine as well. Um, I'm Fantastic. just trying to think. I'm all for it. Um, Fantastic. I, 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 I would, I, yeah. Go on, Rachel, go on. No, no, you, you, you carry on. I was just going to say, I think there was also a, a recipe for a, you thought of a side dish as well. I know this can be found on the cornwallairambulance.org um, website, the 12 days of Christmas. Um, yeah. With a side well, dish as well, is that right? I did. I just made a little, um, I haven't, I, probably haven't got time to cook it for you but I just made a um a sprout dish and I'm, most people just like sprouts plainly boiled and many people complain about sprouts at Christmas but I just think they're quite nice personally um, but but what I have done is just to shred the sprouts in other words cut them up very finely and um, just toss them in a, in a bit of butter with some lardons and bacon and and some chestnuts and um, I've just oh. made it. I'm, I'm sorry, it's sort of not, um, you know, time constraints, but th that's what it's like. And I, I would just serve that with the, um, with the parmentier. That looks one, amazing. Uh, yeah, no, that's it's, great. it's, it's very nice. Fun, yeah, and of course it's got chestnuts in, so there we have the sort of Christmas yeah, element, I guess. Yeah, I love that. No, um, I'm a big Brussels so sprout fan. Yes. I think um, you can make lots of jokes about them, but I, I actually think they work very well, particularly with roast turkey or duck, uh, goose. So what I'm doing now is just adding the duck meat, which I've shredded, and some which I've done earlier, which has been rather better shredded. I didn't do it earlier, Nick did it, so there you go. Well done, Nick. <laughs> well done, Nick. <laughs> well done, Nick, yeah. And like now that. all I've got to do now is... Um, consider some seasoning now that this is quite sort of um important the seasoning because you've got to bear in mind that there's an awful lot of salt still in that duck dish because of the the um the cooking and the curing of the of the duck so i'm just going to taste it first enough to see whether it actually needs any salt at all okay. which it does a little bit so i'm going to just add some salt 
add a little and bit. And then in. wax and wax, not not a lot of salt, but a lot of pepper, which I've got here somewhere. Ah, I mean this is really good because, um, as I said, it's so long since. Um, do you know I got? You've been in of... there. Oh. <laughs> it's so long since I've been out of the cookery school. I can't. Well, this doesn't. Just the bottom. <laughs> I can't there remember where go. anything is. <laughs> also, oh, it won't take long. this is funny, you know, because I think what people like about when I'm doing demos, everything sort of goes wrong, and that's what happens at home. But the problem I've got now, right. <laughs> problem I've got now, which shouldn't really happen is because I've got duck fat all over my hands I can't really turn the pepper mill <laughs> I but love it I'm, I'm doing my best I'm doing my best you are you're doing an absolutely sterling job and while you're while you're learning reminding yourself how to do the uh, pepper pepper dish yeah. um obviously for anyone that has just joined us we're obviously live with Rick Stein um in support of Cornwall Air Ambulance for 12 days of Christmas and the big give so do go to cornwellairambulance.org um, to, to, to have a look at, um, obviously, bidding um, on some of the auction, which go live tomorrow, but also um, to donate. And we will double your money if you, uh, if you go that, on to the big gift That's brilliant, today. Rachel. That, that's really good. I know. I know. Um, We're very, so exciting. So exciting. So, so what I'm, I'm doing now is just um, reducing and um, yeah, in terms of, really sort of simple cooking processes re reduction um people always take a slightly ma make a joke at my expense because i never stop talking about re reduction in uh, in my dishes but it's one of those <laughs> things that's so enormously important because um you've probably had your experience yourself of going around to to dinner with somebody that's maybe not the best cook in the world and having something like spaghetti bolognese and the bolognese sauce is just a bit too wishy-washy to go with the pasta and yes. often when that has happened to me I just think all you need to do is leave the sauce on a bit longer a it would cook a bit more but b it would concentrate so that's what I'm doing here oh, I must say okay. I'm, I feel quite pleased with myself about these um, little cranberries in there because I could taste them in there and Can um, you? I do think yes but I think outside Christmas, you shouldn't put them in because the great thing about food, oh. I think, is, is eating things at certain times and looking forward to them. So I agree yes, with that. the cranberries in duck fermenting in now, but not, not outside the 12 days of Christmas. No, I'm, li I'm liking it. And also, I don't think we've got to this bit yet, but because I do have your book, I was looking at the, the recipe for this uh, particular dish and you are using my favorite cheese. Comte, Comte cheese, am I right? Yeah. Oh, I love it. Comte. Yeah, yeah, Comte, love yeah. It. No, we, we did quite a big, in, in the series Secret France, we, we did quite a big sort of number on Comte cheese because it is so, so special. And it is, I think, um, Comte and the, the Dutch Gouda are the two most popular cheeses in the world. And I mean, Conte really? is sort of like, it's certainly in France. Yeah. The thing I love about Conte is it's such a good chick cooking cheese. And um, mm. I mean, I'm obviously cheddar, I'm very fond of cheddar and it works, particularly cauliflower cheese. But there's just this sort of element of sort of fromage-ness about Conte. There it's, is. It's, it's a bit it's like, um, it's a really good cheese. It's got this sort of like, sort of French agricultural smell and taste about it. So, I mean, you could use cheddar, that's what I'm saying, and you'd get a very good result. But if you can get hold of Conte, and don't waste money on using, like, aged Conte, because that is strictly aged for eating as cheese, Straight. not with pudding for anything. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Now, so if you so look at this now, the, um, you can see that this is coming down, reducing... What I, what I want to do, I mean, you can write recipes, funnily enough, to, for how long this will take. But it's really difficult to get it spot on because it really depends on what sort of pan you're reducing. Because, of course, I just remembered, I could just smell my um, duck skin coming out of the oven. And, of course, I've forgotten it. So, um, <laughs> that's that that's the wicky thing you're chatting. Sorry. This is, this is well, well, 
Well cooked duck skin. There you go. Oh, but with a great crackle, right? I bet oh, that will have really a fantastic good. crackle. Wow. But, but as I was going to say, what what it's very important to to try in writing a recipe to say how long a process this will take. But if you've got a wide open pan, it's going to be a lot quicker than if you've got a saucepan. And that okay. is just about it now. Um, it's almost so, somebody once said about cooking that quite a lot of cooking processes, once you get used to them, it's by the sound more than by the look of things that you know when it's done. And I can hear just because the bubbles have become very, very brisk and, and sort of insistent that it's time to take it off the heat and make up the, oh, the finished the, um, the dish. So somewhere I've got a pan. I don't know where I'd be without Nick because, you know, nah. as ever we, all, cooking, we all need a Nick. Yeah. <laughs> um, see, when I'm doing TV, you know, something like this, we just cut and sort of do it again. But here I'm all live. So I, I've got nobody. You're live. Nobody no, to. Um, <laughs> nobody to um, rely on. Of course, I forgot my parsley, but I'll put that on top. It should be fine. There is some parsley to go. On. So there we wow. go. Parsley on there. Just move that in a bit. And there's my filling. As you can wow. see, it's still quite wet. But by the time I put my mashed potato and my cheese on top of that, that will make the most delicious pie filling. So let us now have a look at the mash, see how we've got with that. Um, and what the recipe I've written, sorry, I should be looking up too much. I'm, I'm just um, no, no, concentrating no, no. on Honestly. cooking. We're um, watching you, Rick. This is very exciting. The recipe I've, I've written for the mashed potato, potato, Rachel, is actually quite a lean one. So all I'm using is just cooked potatoes. And um, Nick is going to tell me which what sort of potato it is. It's Maris Piper. Um, we always yeah. love Maris Piper for, for making mashed love potato, but also for making big chips as well, Rachel, don't you think? They're just, it's just a great... Oh, yeah. I've had a few of those in your, in your restaurant. <laughs> oh, that's good. Can I have a bit more milk? Um, so with the mashed potato, all I'm doing is putting milk in it. In other words, I'm not making it too rich. And the reason for that, of course, is that the pie is so rich that if you put two lo loads of butter and cream and whatever into your mash... It'll just it'd be too much. I mean, the great yeah, the, the I thing about with sort of, that. you do tell me what tell me why. Well, but just like what you've just said, and I don't know whether our yeah. viewers watching as well. I always struggle with that, so I always add in. I do my mash. I'm a massive butter lover, so I whack in yeah. at least half a whack of butter. But then you think, oh, I must add milk. Apparently, I must add milk, so I do, and then it can become a little bit like semolina, which has the totally the wrong. So how do you avoid that then? Just keep cooking. Just keep oh, just cooking, keep really. Keep, keep, keep yeah. cooking. I mean, the other, okay. I mean, the thing is that I sort of learn things about um, cooking all the time and you just feel that, you know, how, how, how long do you have to keep on learning stuff? But I do. One of the Absolutely. things I picked up during lockdown from Sass, my wife's mother, was the best way of making mashed potato is to use a whisk. Now, you probably know that, to use, you know, like a cake whisk. Um, yeah, I do. Um, but, in fact, if you just use just an ordinary masher, you know, the one that you don't... The masher. The, sort of yep. the, the masher. And then you get a, a two-whisk, electric whisk. Not only does it make the most wonderfully um, smooth mashed potato, but it also aerates the mashed potato so it, it just increases in volume and just has this light fluffiness now i've yeah, always used nice. a, a a potato ricer before which is you know one of those that sort of thing but yeah. actually using a yeah. whisk it's better it's better it works uh -huh. yeah what's a treat so i'm just going to taste this now you do just realize put a bit that of now salt in. the uh, sales for whisks on amazon have just gone up twofold so just so you That's know funny. <laughs> And if that happens, they need to donate to the Cornwall Air Ambulance Trust. Dot all. Um, so, I think they should. I think they should. So if you're watching, Mr. Amazon, I think you should do that. I just want to make doubly sure for anyone that's watching or just joined us. Um, I uh, just to make sure it's the Cornwall Air Ambulance Trust. Dot org. 
for Rick's obviously full recipe where you can donate loads of money for the 12 days of Christmas um, and also the big give. Oh, look at that. See, now I'm hungry. Well, how long what I've done now... <laughs> What I've done now is I've actually made the mash a bit wetter than I normally would if I was serving it up as a as a side dish, and that's simply to make it easy to um to uh to get on top of my um to get on pie. top yeah um Nick, who's a proper chef, said do you do you want to pipe this you know use a uh, piping bag and I said no yeah, okay. <laughs> no there's two chefy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just want to do it like you do at home. Right, so that's yeah. that. Wow. So now we'd have the cheese. And this is the sort of killer blow, I think, with cheese, because, um, you know, if you're making a cottage pie now, you would put butter and a bit, uh, maybe some cream in the mashed potato because you want it nice and rich. But because you've got this masses of Conte cheese on the top, no way would you want that mashed potato to be too rich as well. And, to so, and as it, you see, I'm right. not messing about here with the cheese. Um, no, it's, go, it's, it's you, you're free flowing on the burgundy <laughs> and that complicated cheese. Rick, I'm exactly. Like Great. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, um, I mean, it's sort of food like this, obviously not on Christmas Day, but it's food like this over Christmas, but, you know, cheers you up. Um, and it's, it's Definitely. sort of family, family food and if you're lucky yeah, enough to get we... Christmas with your family, and thank goodness we are all lucky enough to get Christmas with many of our we family. We are. We are. And this um, is like a bit of a winter warmer, isn't it? This is a, a real sort of winter warmer for Christmas. Definitely. So um, I'm just going to put that in the oven now for probably about Great. 20 minutes. And um, as um, in good Blue Peter style, of course I've done one already. Of course, <laughs> here's one we made earlier. I love that. Um, because Great. this is... Um, that's how it would look when it's finished. Oh, look at that. And um, Super. Do you know what I think I might do? And this is a very sneaky thing to do. Oh, yeah. I think I might just just have a taste of one and, and, and feel sorry for all of you out there that you can't do it yourself. But Yeah, there's nothing I quite think, like I think it's only right that I, should, um, that I should have a go. So uh, let's yeah. put it over here because it all looks a bit special. Do you know what I'm also going to do, which is very naughty too? Have you got any more of that red wine left, do not Nick? Oh, Rick, you can't do that to us. You're joking. Right. <laughs> but let's get my sprouts. And, um... Oh, Nick, look at him. Amazing. Oh, look, you're literally, so... you're literally sitting down to eat, eat your lunch. Oh. Well, I just thought I'd, um, you know, yeah, just see how we're going. something up. Well, <laughs> This, honestly, this is amazing. So for all of there you at go. home that may have done it, look at that. So let's have a bit more. Wow. As, um, Why not? One of the things that we always do when we're filming with food is to put slightly more on the plate. Because um, the director see... I worked with for years said the camera's always hungry. <laughs> I don't know about the camera. Yes. <laughs> I, I, always think, am. I think they're right. So there we are. go. Now then, Aww. I'm just going to find a little fork somewhere and um, maybe just have a taste. And you see, it okay. sort of looks, it looks sort of quite ordinary, but how does it taste? Oh, <laughs> it just, I don't know how to describe this, but we all, as I said, we all know what cottage pie or shepherd's tart pie tastes like, but just having duck in there, you just think, it's so sort of deluxe, you know, it really, really... It is. I don't know. It lifts it the spirit, so spirit Rachel. Does it? Well, I'm and, so oh. glad to hear that. And is that lovely? And you know what I mean about French cheese? It's this sort of like lovely sort of warm sort of sort of sauciness about it. Um, yeah. It's like, you know, when you go into French restaurants and you smell... It's interesting. I'm going to start getting a bit sort of thoughtful now, but... When you go into French restaurants in France and there's a cheese trolley there and you get that sort of like pong of cheese, oh, it seems yummy. all right. It seems all right. But it, it's funny because if you it's went allowed. into an English restaurant and there was a yeah. trolley there with a, a British restaurant, I shouldn't say English, I'll get all the Welsh, Irish, Scots, yeah. you know. Yeah, British, British. <laughs> <laughs> I mean You're British. Right. 
would, people we would just say, we um, our nose oh, that's too smelly. Yeah. And, and how's your burgundy? Good? Oh, my burgundy. It's not burgundy. It's funny because it's my son, Charlie. You've got the bottle there. It's, come, it's, it's really, I'm quite interested in this because he's really good at, um, where's it from? Bulgaria. Bulgaria. Oh, I don't fantastic. know if you're old enough, but Charlie's oh, yeah. really good at finding great wines, Rachel, and um, cheap wines. And I don't know if you remember, but I am so old that I remember in the 70s, there was a, a, you used to be able to get Bulgarian red wine. I think it was called B Bulgarian, I think it's Bulgarian Burgundy or something like that, which was actually really good. And so I've got quite a lot of it affection for Bulgarian wines. I got a lot of affection yeah. for this one. I don't know where he this got it from, but and is this one of Charlie? So will we be able to find it, it on is. his Instagram or brilliant? I think we'll probably be selling Charlie. it on our um, probably be selling on it your on Rick, our um, Rick Steins. yeah. I'm saying and this, and they'll say, "No, we're not, you fool." <laughs> yeah, you can't get it. <laughs> Look, we'll Dad, be getting it now. <laughs> I told you not to. <laughs> <laughs> well, it goes oh, well. Is... So thank, thank you, it Charlie, for that far. recommendation. <laughs> We'll be, we'll be selling Tell out of that, that now, I can hear. Is that, is that yummy? And how are your Brussels and chestnuts? I'm loving them. Nice. I'm, I oh, am I'm loving them. It's so sort of, jealous. You can almost... I mean, in that Brussels and chestnuts, it's funny because it's sort of almost... The one thing I do like that my mother used to make at Christmas was really good chestnut stuffing. So having the Brussels and yes. a bit of bacon in there and chestnuts, is just... It's very yeah, Christmassy. So, um, it's very Christmas that and thing. that and that, you know. It's a winner. I've this is your the, this is <laughs> the Rick Stein dish for the twelve days of Christmas. I think you've nailed it. Honestly, I think you've nailed, I think this is fantastic. So, any of you, you guys, your versions. We want to see your versions. So, make sure you email CormelAirAmbulanceTrust.org. Please email them in so that we can actually see your version. But this, Rick, honestly, this has been incredible. Um, and I know, obviously, the grand auction goes live tomorrow. Um, so, obviously, we can have two, two slots, um, obviously, at your cookery school. So, thank you for that. Um, and your Rick Stein book as well for the Secret France. Tomorrow night, I'm just being shown the grand auction is going live from 6 p.m. tomorrow evening, where we're going to raise so much money. But, Rick, I just want to say a huge thank you on behalf of all of us, everyone that's watching um, it's, it's such an honour to have you on, honestly, and, and from us to you, a massive thank you. We will definitely let you know how much we, uh, we raise. Um, I do have just one last question for our, from um, the new ambassador, um, Karen Dickens, for Committee Boats UK and Caribbean. Now, she says to you, right, and you mentioned this earlier, talking about people in the kitchen and not, maybe not being the best chef. Well, Karen, I've got to say it. So despite being a chemist... Um, she can't cook. In fact, she says she's a total disaster in the kitchen. She says, Rick, is it ever too late to learn? And do you have any tips for those that aren't so good in the kitchen? Well, I do really. I do, Carol, because I think, um, I don't think that, that you, I think everybody's innately, pop, innate, has got an innate, innate ability to cook. I think it's a bit like learning language. It's such an important part. It's the most important thing that we do. I don't think that anybody actually underneath it all, when all said and done, can't cook. And so I think it's always, there's always time to learn to cook. To and learn. I think it's just, it's just, you know, what you need to do first of all is if you love food, if you love eating food, you're going to love cooking it. It's as simple as that. Absolutely. So that's well, my if... view, Rachel. That's your that's your take. Well, thank you for that. Karen, I know thank we'll be you. hugely grateful. Um, but just to say a huge thank you to all the team. I know we've got Karen, Cormel Air Ambulance, yourself. We have multiple artists of ours, including Sherry, um, and some of our artists that have, 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 are also going to be raising money for Cormel Air Ambulance 12 Days of Christmas. Kerry, I know, who's been amazing at IPR, who's going to give you a little, little oh. wave there too. Um, but from us to you, Rick Stein, thank you incredibly. And I wish you and Sass and all your family a very, very merry, merry Christmas. Well, let me just say both to you, Rachel, and to Kerry, uh, thank you for everyone for, for joining me today. I mean, it's been a lot of fun. I wish I could see you all. I don't know what you're I, thinking. But, um, I, I, I wish I could just eat let me, it. <laughs> <laughs> um, just let me 
finish by saying, but please do give generously to the Cor Cornwall Air Ambulance and just have a very, very Merry Christmas. You as well. Thank you so much, Rick. Cheers. Merry Christmas to you all. Oh, Take care. I've got to try that. Yeah, thank you. I knew you were going to end on that. <laughs> now, now you can have a bit of wine. Have a little bit of wine as well. I don't know whether you've got any left in that bottle, have you? <laughs> Tiny, Tiny bit. It's all gone into Tiny. this. I love it. Thank you very much, Rick. Cheers. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.